Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of the Rotary Club of Merrimack television show. Today's topic is one that everyone enjoys and the community has come to recognize Rotary by, and that is Christmas trees. I'm Maureen Mooney, a longtime resident of Merrimack and a member of the Rotary Club of Merrimack, and I'll be your host for the show. The guests today are Joe Mitchell, who is a longtime Rotarian. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Maureen. Pleasure to be here. And also with us is Bill Wilkes. Bill is currently the president of the Rotary Club of Merrimack. Welcome, Bill. Thank you, Maureen. Today's show is special. Yes, we're talking about the Christmas trees in town, but we're also going to recognize something very special, and that is Bill Wilkes. He has coordinated the Christmas tree sales in Merrimack for the Rotary Club and for the whole community for the past 30 years. 30 years he has coordinated this fundraiser and made a tremendous amount of families in Merrimack very happy when they see their tree year after year. Next year he's passing the torch and uh, he's not going away, but he's passing the torch on that endeavor. And we are so appreciative of all the work he's done over the past 30 years on this. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's been a pleasure to serve the community and provide great Christmas trees. Oh, no doubt. Let's get right into the Christmas tree sale. So when does the Christmas tree sale take place this year? This year, we're gonna be starting on Saturday the 26th, and uh, we will sell trees until we sell out. And most likely that'll be somewhere in the middle part of December. We have a lot of loyal customers. We know the quantity of trees we need to buy, and uh, everything works out well, and, and it's a great success for the community. No doubt. And where does the tree sale take place? It takes place at Watson Park, Okay. which for those who may not know, it's directly across from the fire department. And uh, there's an excellent parking down there, and it has worked well for us over the last several years. That's great. Now, where do the trees come from? We buy the trees from Quebec. Okay. In, uh, in Canada, so they have yes, a long yes. uh, way to come to, yes, to make it to Merrimack. Yes. And sometimes that can be challenging because of weather. Yeah. We've had times where the truck shows up and it's full of ice and snow. We may, we may not be snowing in, in Merrimack, but it could be snowing up north. So the trees get encased in ice and snow and it's a little more bit of a challenge to unload them. But we every year we've been able to get them off the truck and get them at the stand. That's great. Now this next question, nobody knows the answer to better than you because you've been doing this for 30 years. But when are the trees ordered and how are they ordered? Well, the process starts in July. Okay. Um, typically, the, the uh, vendor contacts me in July and asks me if we're gonna be selling trees again. And, and every year I say yes. And then, you know, of course I ask for pricing and uh, you know, we have a designated farm that we like to get our trees from because they're high quality trees and we've had great luck with them. So we have that discussion. And then I go to the Rotary Board, board of Directors and tell them exactly what's going on, um, the price of the trees, how many I think we should buy. Um, and it's usually accepted by the board to buy whatever quantity I recommend and uh, then we place our initial order in September. Wow, so much goes on to uh, coordinate and organize this fundraiser behind the scenes. Not many would believe that uh, they have to be ordered in July. We're already talking Christmas in July to get that order on time. When do the trees arrive this year? This, this year we're getting the trees on Monday the 21st, uh, obviously a few days before Thanksgiving. But, you know, they'll be on the site for five or five days or so before we start selling. And how is the Christmas tree stand set up? It's quite elaborate down there with lights. There's a trailer that's brought in, uh, various stands for the larger trees, the smaller trees, even the rotary emblem, a huge one, is on display there. Who sets that all up? Rotarians set up everything. And we've gotten smarter over the years. We used to store our stuff at a remote place and we'd have to go there and pick it up uh, and then pick up other things maybe at another site but now we have a trailer and we keep everything in the trailer so it's kind of like a 
turnkey project, so to speak. We uh, go get the trailer, we bring it to the site, we open the door and everything's there. It's like a kit. <laughs> and we have a lot of Rotarians that are very familiar with the process and it, we've gotten really efficient at it over the years. And you know, I'd say it may take us no more than two hours, but realistically an hour and a half to set up the site. That is something, and uh, m that's mostly due to your great leadership over the past 30 years, uh, planning all of that and organizing it, that it just comes together so nicely when the sale is about to begin. And you say the sale is gonna begin on November 26th this year? Yes, yeah, that's a Saturday. And uh, we will be there at eight o'clock in the morning and we will be selling till eight o'clock at night. Now, if a buyer would wanna come and buy a tree, is the parking scenario a good one? How, where would someone park? Well, again, it's Watson Park. Okay. And Watson Park has several designated parking spots. So we have plenty of parking and it's easy to get in and out of. And we, you know, some may remember that we have sold trees at different locations. One, you know, at the Shaw's, old Shaw's Plaza, as the people who have been around town for a while called it, uh, we sold at the old Shaw's Plaza for, I don't even know, 10 or 15 or more years. Right. And, uh, you know, when they renovated that plaza, we had to move and we moved to Watson Park. But I think Watson Park has worked out better than the Shaw's Plaza did. It's more central to the community and it's, it's easy to get in and out and we're not competing with any retail stores. So it's been a good thing for us. That's great. And the hours again this year, I know you're open uh, all week long. So on Saturdays, we're open eight to eight. Okay. Sundays, 10 o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night. And then weekdays, we're open from four o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock at night. Okay, very good. And when the lights are on, you're open. Absolutely. Do you have a particular recommendation of a good time for a buyer to come and buy a tree? We never have like a crowd that's overwhelming, but definitely the weekends are busier. Uh, Saturday mornings early, it's pretty light traffic. Uh, the afternoons get busy on Saturdays, same with Sundays. But if you don't want to fight any crowd whatsoever, Mondays or Tuesdays are great nights to show up. Joe, what do you think? Any recommendations for a good time to buy a tree? I agree with Bill. I think it's best to get there uh, when there's not as many people, so Monday through Friday evening, they're always very easy to get in and out. Um, the weekends, they don't get that crowded either, it's, but it's very steady in the weekends and it's a little bit easier to get waited on uh, during the week. Definitely. So when does the tree sale end? Well, we, let, we pride ourselves in selling every tree. So we schedule uh, Rotarians in at times we have non-Rotarians helping us out too, as well as the Interact Club. The Interact Club is, is a part of Rotary, but it's for the younger people at the high school. So we have those people helping us. We schedule people uh, and they have designated shifts and it would be kind of just like you were at work. Yeah. I mean, if you're due to be there four to eight, you know, we, we don't dock your pay, <laughs> but uh, you know, we expect you to show up on your shift uh, in, you know, we go through a process of making the schedule and uh, people check when they're available. But uh, over the years, we haven't had much problem with that. Once people commit to the shift, they show up. So, but Rotarians are kind of in charge, but there's helpers also. Yes, and if a Rotarian, if something comes up and a Rotarian needs to ha swap with someone for a shift, that's a common practice in our club and that we um, find someone and they take over our shift and we take theirs, very easy. Yeah, and Rotarians are accommodating and so it works out well. It's not a problem whatsoever. Right, all right, now to get into the trees themselves, what kind of trees are available this year? Well, we, we buy three different types of trees. We buy balsams, we buy Frasers, and there's a new tree that's come about in the last five or six or more years, and they're kind of a hybrid tree. In hybrid meaning, they're a combination of balsam and Fraser. Uh, and, they, a fra and a Fraser is a fir tree, right? Yes. As opposed to a balsam. Okay. Yes. Um, the growers claim that the hybrids have the best of both worlds. I see. 
Yes, you know, um, in the trailer, when we sell trees, there's various things posted on the wall. For example, all of our phone numbers, just in case someone needs to come to their shift or needs to swap and what the schedule is. Another uh, handout is a comparison sheet between the Fraser and the balsam, and with a visual there in terms of what they look like. How would you contrast the two or compare the two? So the Fraser's have a, a stronger branch and heavier needle. Um, so if you have a heavy ornament, some customers prefer the Fraser's. Uh, the, the balsams, the needles aren't as strong, or the branches are not as strong, but in the needles, you know, are not as strong also, but they smell better. Yes. And depending on what you like, uh, you would choose one or the other. Yes, that's why Yankee Candle makes uh, such a profit every year out of their balsam candle. Huge ah, seller because yeah, it has that right. scent of Christmas. Yes. And customers, when I've sold trees down at Watson Park, uh, they it matters what kind of tree. And uh, some are definitely looking for the balsam. Some are definitely looking for the Fraser. Absolutely. So, so that's a real big um, thing to know in terms of what the difference between the two is. Correct. How much are the trees this year? Well, unfortunately, we've been forced to raise our price a little bit. We've tried to hold our pricing as low as possible. But this year, we will be selling our six to eight foot trees will be selling for $70. Okay. And our large ones, which are eight to nine feet, they will be $100. Got it. And how is payment received by the Rotary Club of Merrimack? Well, we still receive cash, checks made out to the Rotary Club or we're able to take credit cards. Excellent, and that seems to be the preferred method. Not that it matters, but I do notice several have taken advantage of the credit card uh, processing that we have as a club now. Yes, that's uh, that's been a big addition for us because a lot of people over the years asked if we took credit cards or debit cards and we were unable to take them. But now with te technology the way it is, we have one of those nice little devices that you can just s swipe the credit card through and and the customer can pay that way. It works well. Very well. Now there's a tradition in our club to contribute trees to the less fortunate in the community. Joe, can you give us a summary of that? Yes, every year um, we um, contact the town welfare department to try to identify uh, people in the town who are having uh, some assistance from, from the town uh, and who may need a, a free Christmas tree. Um, we contact we get a list of, of folks that welfare department feels are in need and um, we give them welfare department a sheet of paper and the sheet of paper goes out to the person the family that's in need and they bring that down and uh, we give them a free tree um, a couple of years people have needed to have the trees transported and we can arrange to do that as well just a little story if I may I, I I was down there one year and a lady came in that I knew quite well. She worked for a client of mine and, and I knew that uh, the client was downsizing, although she was a good worker and she got uh, laid off uh, right around the beginning of the month of December. So she came down with a with little sheet of paper and said, geez, Joe, I'm so embarrassed about this, um, um, but I'm, I'm here to get a free tree if I can. Uh, and I knew she was a, a single mother with a couple of children and um, she said, you know, I, I hope you don't tell anybody about this. And I said, you know, this is what we're here for. We're really glad to do this. Um, it's a great thing for us to be able to help out. And if you need help this year, we're very, very happy to help out. And if you need help next year too, we'll be glad to do it again. So it really helps out people who are going through a hard time, either temporarily or permanently. Excellent. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, such a service to the community. And if any of our viewers would be interested in donating a tree themselves to somebody, perhaps they could go to our website, uh, MerrimackRotary.com, and contact one of us to see how they, too, could get involved in donating a tree to someone in town. Yeah. How tall are the trees this year? Well, we, we buy 300 trees that are six to eight feet. So they vary between that, those two dimensions. And then we buy 50 trees that are eight to nine feet. Some people with cathedral ceilings, they like the big ones. Um, obviously not everybody wants the big ones. Um, they're a lot of fun to put up and you can put a lot on them, but they are heavy. Uh, so we do sell more of the six to eights than anything. And uh, those are the different sizes. 
Excellent. Now, um, you mentioned earlier that the Rotarians do shifts in order to sell the trees, typically in four hour blocks. How is that schedule created and how is it manned? Well, um, again, we have a person in the club who's taken responsibility for the schedule and uh, they talk to the club members, usually starting in October, late October, asking them when they're available and when they're not available. And they gather that information and they put out a preliminary schedule and then there's a little discussion back and forth by people saying, oh, I didn't, I forgot that I did have a commitment on a certain date or whatever. But long story short, at the end of the day, um, we have a final schedule and people are really good about meeting their commitments. Yeah, that's great. Now, when someone buys a tree, naturally they have to transport it home. So Joe, how is it that someone could take their Christmas tree home? Well, our favorite mode of transportation is, of course, the pickup truck. So yes. if somebody comes with a pickup truck, we only have to put it in the back and it doesn't have to be tied down, and that's really easy. Uh, most folks, though, uh, need to have it either tied down uh, in their trunk sometimes, but particularly on top of the car. If they have a, a roof rack some, of some kind or a blanket to put up there to go between the, tr the, the car and the, and the, uh, the tree, um, we then uh, tie the, the, uh, the tree to the car or to the roof rack so that it can be easily transported. And then when they get home, they just snip the, the twine and take the tree in the house. One thing Rotary offers is to take a, about an inch or so off the tree from the bottom. What is the significance of that? Okay, when, when the tree is cut um, in the field, um, it's usually several days before we can get it here to Merrimack. And so the bottom, the sap on the bottom gets hard. And then if you put it in the water like that, the, the water has a hard time getting up into the bark to up into the tree to keep the tree moist. So when we sell it in Merrimack, if you're gonna put it in the water right away when you get home, uh, what we do is we cut about an inch off the bottom or as much as they want off the bottom. And we, sometimes we have to trim it up a little bit to make room for the Christmas tree stand. Right. Uh, and then we fresh cut the bottom and then when they get, you get it home, they put it right in the water um, and the tree can, uh, is, doesn't, the sap on the bottom isn't hardened yet. So it can go right up the tree and keep the tree fresh for as long as you have it in your home. Oh, that's great. Now, oftentimes some years it gets icy, it gets snowy. Who is it that brushes the snow off the trees? Well, Rotarians uh, work together and uh, you know, whether one of the people in the club might have a snow plow and they can get some of the big, uh, larger amounts of snow out of the way, we do that. But we also have a couple of Rotarians that bring down a snow blower and uh, then old fashioned shovels. Yes. And we shovel the aisles so that uh, customers can get in there and view the trees. So one way or another, we get the snow out of the site. Yeah. Uh, it, sometimes it's more work. In other years, we don't have any snow at all. Right, and again, if those lights are on at Watson Park, we're open. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, do you have a favorite memory over the past 30 years of selling Christmas trees? Well, I think you have one of the best memories, Maureen, <laughs> and I'd like you to share that with the um, audience because that's a, that's a great memory. I do have a great memory. In fact, I have a photo to go with it. Uh, it was a while back and it was at a time when Rotary was selling trees at where Hayward's ice cream is now. And I, I was on my shift and I'm selling trees and we're going about our business. And the next thing you know, a car pulls up and they take out of their car, a little car, a child's car, as well as a little Christmas tree. And they took out a little child <laughs> and they started to set up in front of our stand uh, the tree tied to this little car and they put the little boy in the little car and our tree stand served as the background for this photo and so it looked as though this baby was driving away with a little Christmas tree from our stand in his little car and they took a picture it was going to be their Christmas card picture that year and so I took a picture as well because I just thought this was the cutest thing and I've kept it all this time because it's such a great memory from selling trees I can guarantee you and I think the photo is on the screen that that child is probably in high school now driving around picking up his own trees but what a fun and very cute memory to hold on to for sure no that was a great one a uh, couple of other memories that I I remember over the years, but one of them was uh, we've had, so some of the cars, the way the doors are designed, they're the metal band that goes from the base of the door around the windows and so forth. We've had people roll their windows down 
in the, we've had different Rotarians or the customer tie the tree on the roof and then when they go to leave, they try to open the door, but they've tied the doors shut. So right. that's, that's kind of a funny memory also. Definitely. Now, when you go to the Christmas tree stand, you'll see a banner. And on the banner, there are gold, silver, and bronze sponsors. Uh, who are those individuals and businesses? So those are sponsors that we get over the, throughout the year, uh, primarily at the road race. Uh, one of the ways that we make money for the road race is by getting sponsors. But, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we want to give people as much exposure as possible because, it, to tell you the truth, if, if they get a benefit from being a sponsor, it's a lot easier for us to get them to sponsor the next year. So we try to give them more exposure. They get exposure with different signs and so forth leading up to the road race on our website in act, the actual road race. But then we extend it and give them exposure pretty much the three weeks, maybe four weeks that we're down at the, the Christmas tree stand. That's great. So when you go shopping for a Christmas tree, be sure to notice the names on that banner yes. because they truly are patrons of our club and therefore patron of the community. Uh, if someone were interested in sponsoring next year, perhaps they should go to the Merrimack rotary.com website and contact one of us about being a sponsor for next year and appearing on the banner? Yes, or if you personally know a Rotarian, approach them. That's another way to, to get your name or get a sponsorship going. Great. Just want to get into the Rotary Club of Merrimack a little deeper in terms of what the club does in town and where the proceeds go from this fundraiser and others that we have throughout the year. Well, Maureen, we, we've... Um had a wide variety of projects that we've taken part of uh, on a year-to-year -year basis and sometimes on a one-time basis. I wrote a few of them down here. Um, we do the uh, annual contribution to Coats for Kids, which is uh, right, done right around this time of the year. Uh, we helped uh, with construct the dog park at Wasserman Park. Uh, we do have an electronics uh, recycling program that we've done twice this last year, but I think we're gonna do it annually. Uh, we made a contribution to Erica's run the year that uh, the years that that has run. We try to give something every year to the food banks in town. Um, I think there are either two or three now, but uh, anyway, whenever they need some help, uh, we're very very glad to help them. We have a four-way speech contest that we conduct every year for Merrimack High School uh, that gives out um, uh, money to help them with their uh, college expenses. The, the children who participate. We have a pancake breakfast every year on the Fourth of July. Um, we helped construct the gazebo, uh, made a contribution to that that's at the Abbey Griffin Park, and also we contributed to the steps that lead from the DW Highway up the hill up to Abbey Griffin Park. Um, we did the uh, Kids Cove construction twice. We did the original park, and then we did the second park when the first one uh, needed to be replaced. Uh, we've also contributed to the uh, resurfacing and some of the upkeep uh, at Kids Cove. We've helped out the police department with the, their body armor purchase and also with the recent uh, police dog purchase and training. Um, we constructed the pavilion at Watson Park, which is the Duhamel pavilion that a lot of people use to get down there and enjoy the park during the, during the uh, mostly during the summertime, but it's open all year round. We have a scholarship fund uh, that we give out every year at graduation time to uh, not only somebody in, in financial need that's going to a regular curriculum, but also we want to make sure that we give some to somebody going to a trade school or somebody majoring in, a, in an arts program. Um, we give scouting recognition to the uh, Girl Scouts uh, and to the Boy Scouts, on a, usually on an annual basis. We sponsor the Turkey Trot race that Bill mentioned, which is the five kilometer race, which is coming up on the morning of this Thanksgiving of this year and every year on it. So we hope you can come and participate or uh, watch a lot of uh, people more fit than myself, <laughs> go out there and have a good time with the cold weather. Uh, we, gave the, we give uh, the welfare department trees that we talked about, and we participate in the YMCA CARES program um, on a regular basis. We've also done uh, several international uh, donations to the, um, uh, the uh, dam project in India this last year that was sponsored by a local Rotary Club. Also the Guatemala Literacy Project, which takes uh, an effort to educate schools in rural Guatemala, which are much in need of uh, facilities and 
um, uh, books and whatnot. And also we gave a, a donation this last year to a, a through the Rotary uh, International to the um, country of Ukraine, which is obviously much in the news. So we try to stay involved. <laughs> and again, our priority is to help out our, our community first, but also to uh, understand that we're part of a bigger world as well. I'd just like to add to what Joe said about scholarships. Uh, believe it or not, we give the most dollars in town for scholarships. Last year we gave wow. $24,000 in scholarships. Wow. And I think that blows away most of the other scholarships. Not that they're not significant, but um, Rotary does really help the seniors graduating at Merrimack High School and uh, any other institution uh, for anybody who lives in town, yeah. uh, whether it be a private uh, school or what or whatever. Amazing. I forgot to mention too that the Reeds Ferry School, there are some athletic fields there adjacent to the school. Oh, and right. they, they have a very nice set of lights up there that uh, we put up a number of years ago. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. To think that the community, by buying a tree to have a nice Christmas, helps the community in all of those ways that you mentioned. It's really quite a program. And I want to thank you both so much for being on the show. Also, a special th shout out to those that help sell trees who not aren't necessarily Rotarians. Joe, you said you had family members. I know, Bill, you have as well uh, to sell those trees and also the Interact Club from Merrimack High School. So it's hard to believe our time is coming to a close, but we'll see everybody when they come to buy a tree starting on November 26th. Joe, thank you so much. And Bill, thank, thank you. you so much for 30 years, 30 years of coordinating this very important fundraiser for our club and our community. Merry Christmas to all, and thank you for watching.